Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I want to talk a little bit about a recent development in Calgary. And that is, over the past year or so, uh, the city has been installing cycle tracks downtown. And now that comes at the expense of some road surface in some areas. A road surface that would normally be used by uh, v uh, vehicular traffic, um, uh, motor vehicles. And in some areas it uses uh, bits of the road that weren't actually being used by anything uh, due to the lane configurations and so on. Uh, now, there was a lot of opposition to the notion of these cycle tracks downtown uh, when they were first being discussed. Uh, one of the big complaints was that it would be increasing traffic congestion by removing road surface that was previously used by the traffic. The other big uh, complaint was that it was uh, making a substantial change in the traffic dynamics for the benefit of a very small number of people. Uh, and that uh, it wouldn't be useful for three or four months of the year because it would be too cold out. Now, these have been op in operation downtown for um, like a around about a year. Council just recently voted to make them permanent. And that, of course, opened up the debate again. Uh, the naysayers had brought out their same arguments again, and the people supporting it brought out their same arguments, the supporting arguments being that uh, it encourages uh, cycling, which is more environmentally friendly. Uh, it takes some vehicles off the road, uh, at least for most of the year. And it makes things a lot safer for those that do decide to use their bicycles. And that's, uh, that's all some fairly valid uh, points. And the naysayers have, have some points as well. Now, over the past year or so, I haven't particularly noticed any particular impairment in the general traffic flow downtown. So I think the traffic congestion arguments probably aren't going to hold water. And I think that's partly why this was a pilot project initially, is so they could actually gauge the, the effects of the cycle tracks on actual traffic flow dynamics. The, the reason it might not have had much of an impact on overall traffic flow is because in a lot of cases, multiple lanes don't actually improve throughput depending where the traffic is trying to get to. Uh, sometimes all it takes is some protected turn cycles for or phases for turns um, uh, and, and that sort of thing. Now where the cycle tracks are along the streets, they do have to change the uh, cycle t or the uh, signal timing. Uh, because there has to be a phase for the uh, cyclists as well. Uh, uh, and there, there has to be some means of uh, uh, avoiding conflicts when there is turning traffic. Uh, so you don't want the motor vehicles turning across the cyclists uh, when both have the right-of-way. That's actually dangerous uh, because the motor vehicles are looking for pedestrians that are currently crossing, but they're not looking for stuff moving at speed from behind uh, that might be crossing their path because turns usually don't have anything coming at speed on the in the turn direction. Uh, so that meant that they had to uh, rejigger a bunch of uh, signal timing. Now, that uh, would have been done based on current traffic dynamics and that would have uh, potentially improved traffic flow even if they had done that without the cycle tracks being involved. Uh, so there may be a, an offsetting benefit from, ch from the change in the uh, signal timings uh, as a result of that. Now at the same time there's also been some uh, conversions of roads that used to be one way into two-way traffic and uh, or back into two-way traffic, and that's had a change, uh, cause a change in traffic dynamics as well. Uh, 
Uh, so it's not necessarily uh, obvious what is a direct effect of the cycle tracks and what isn't. But whatever the situation actually is, whatever the cause and effect actually is, and I'm sure the, uh, the engineer types that are analyzing this stuff have uh, done a lot more analysis based on a lot more data than, than uh, my feeling that things haven't really gotten worse. Uh, whatever the situation, things don't seem to have gotten appreciably worse, or at least any more worse than uh, it would have been just from general traffic growth. Now, how much of that is due to uh, reduced uh, building occupancy downtown due to the economic circumstances is unclear. Uh, but uh, it does mean that uh, uh, when the economic situation reverses, it's just going to be the standard ramp up of traffic that you would get anyway. Uh, so, uh, what it comes down to is based on my. Uh, personal experience, which admittedly is somewhat limited because I don't go downtown every day. Uh, based on my experience, uh, it seems to me that the uh, cycle track is not actually causing any particular problems uh, other than the general confusion that something new causes for drivers as they have to deal with something that they're not used to. Anyway, uh, the, uh, the cycle track I think is a good idea. I was a little bit on the fence, or possibly opposed to it, I can't remember uh, that far back, uh, back when it was being discussed, I thought it was generally a bad idea, the way they were going about doing it. But it, it seems that they actually did more planning based on more data than I actually had, and and that's actually a good thing, that's that's what they should have been doing. Uh, but I, I think it's a good idea for a couple of reasons. First of all, it makes it possible for people to choose their bicycle and uh, as a means of transport to and from the downtown core or th through the downtown core. Uh, whereas previously you would have to share the road with the regular motor vehicles in the same space on the road and that's just dangerous. Most motor vehicles, most drivers don't have a clue how to share the road with a bicycle and even if they do, a lot of cases the roads are just too narrow for it to be safe or it's um, or the traffic was set up with the assumption that there were no bicycles and that made it difficult for the cyclists to deal with everything. So then you'd have either them on the sidewalk with the pedestrians, which is illegal by the way, or you'd have them uh, uh, dodging around traffic and, and generally it, it was less safe. And, this, and also it didn't connect well with the cycle paths, the bike paths around the city. Uh, the, because there's a fairly extensive pathway network along around the rivers and various parks and so on. And, you know, you, once you hit the downtown area, you were spit out into the densest, pretty much the densest traffic in the city. And you had nothing. Um, uh, so if you had to get through the downtown core with the really dense traffic that barely moves, it was inconvenient. So... Basically, what the cycle tracks are is a, uh, an extension of the bike paths, uh, but using road surfaces. So basically, you connect into the cycle path, uh, you know, and it's it's on a road, um, which is the only thing you can do in areas that are really densely built up. You can't just arbitrarily add paths, and you can't take away the pedestrian space uh, when it's already pretty much minimized by the development. So it gives a pass for the bicycles to move. And uh, for the most part, uh, it, uh, it, it seems to work for that purpose, uh, at least the bicycles going any distance. And then you take the uh, number of uh, cyclists going through in any uh, quantity, um, into one place instead of all over. Uh, I think that helps a bit. But uh, I think the, the biggest thing is uh, we're not seeing the full potential impact of the cycle tracks yet 
because they're relatively limited geographically and their connections outside of the downtown core aren't nearly as good as they could be. So now that this cycle track is permanent, I fully expect that the uh, City Council will start extending the cycle track network uh, outward uh, until it connects with the lower traffic streets and the bike path network and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and as it does that, the volume of usage on the cycle tracks downtown will probably increase as the connections into it become more convenient because the network expands it will be more usable to more or for more people uh, and that's a standard effect that networking causes uh, as the network expands the overall utility of the network for all of its users increases uh, just like the telephone network if it only covers one town it's still useful for the residents of that town, but it's not as useful as it could be. But as soon as you start linking it up to other towns, it becomes much more useful, uh, and exponentially more so as you can reach more and more people. The same th sort of effect applies to the cycle tracks. And I think uh, as the network expands, it's going to substantially improve uh, the uh, utility and I think the ridership on it will go up substantially and it will stop looking like a, 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 a you know a bunch of money spent to appease a small number of people uh, I've also seen that they've used a similar tactic in some of the outlying areas where the uh, bike path network runs concurrent with streets um, th there's at least one place where they've actually built a cycle track uh, on the street uh, separated from the traffic and uh, they reduced that one that particular street to one way uh, but that probably actually improved the traffic dynamics around that street anyway uh, just due to the geographic uh, topological I guess uh, re restraints and or constraints in the area uh, and that makes actually that bit of the path safer for the cyclists because they had to previously go on the street and uh, the, uh, the, the pedestrians continue to use the existing sidewalk uh, and it, it probably makes things a great deal safer uh, for that particular link that, that runs uh, several blocks. Uh, and that uh, that's the sort of thing that I expect we'll see in more areas where it's practical um, and there's enough traffic to warrant a, a, a separation. Uh, there's a lot of other cases where the pathway network goes concur concurrent with streets where there's hardly any traffic, so it doesn't really make all that much of a difference. Uh, so I wouldn't expect them to spend uh, any kind of money building a cycle track in those types of cir circumstances, especially when you've got lots of driveways along the street. Now, aside from the practical operational uh, aspects, there's also the environmental aspect. Now, as a cycle track network gets more usage, and it will over time, uh, there's going to be a corresponding reduction in the number of motor vehicles. And if it's, even if it's not an overall net reduction in absolute number of motor vehicles, it will potentially be a reduction in the increase in number of motor vehicles. Uh, that is obviously going to uh, have an impact on overall traffic volumes, uh, which could improve motor vehicle traffic uh, over time as well but it will also reduce the number of uh, vehicles on the road that are putting out uh, CO2 and other emissions and it will uh, reduce the energy usage uh, for, for those vehicles so even if they're electric vehicles it will reduce the electric usage uh, for charging them because they won't be used as much and that will correspondingly reduce the emissions from power plants that are generating the electricity. So overall a reduction in vehicular traffic is going to reduce emissions whether it be the CO2 that everyone's harping on with the carbon taxes and so on or if other uh, emissions like heat and uh, other things like that. So. Uh, 
uh, that's going to improve things. And if you reduce the number of internal combustion vehicles that are operating for commuting, uh, even if it's just for six months of the year, uh, you're going to uh, substantially improve air quality uh, especially if the number of vehicles that are um, moved off the road for that time is significant. You're going to re reduce the, uh, the, uh, the air quality impact and it's going to be better air. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, I'm a big fan of cleaner air. Uh, it smells better, you know. But let's, let's be honest, uh, I don't particularly care about the long-term deleterious impacts when I'm just going about my daily life. Uh, but the same things that generally impair uh, air quality uh, in the short term are the same things that cause those long-term deleterious impacts. So uh, I guess I do indirectly care when I'm going about my daily life. Now I'm not saying I don't care about the long-term impact on the planet. It's just that it doesn't have that kind of immediacy that air smelling bad does. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a good goal, you know, take the uh, emissions out. Uh, and anything that can allow that is certainly good, especially if it doesn't cost a fortune. And I gather the cycle track network was not hugely expensive to install compared to things like interchanges and stuff to handle uh, motor vehicle traffic. So uh, it, it also has a, a benefit if you're using lighter vehicles like bicycles, uh, you have less wear and tear on that portion of the road surface. So there will be a corresponding reduction in the cost of maintenance as well. So uh, on that part of the road surface, so I suppose that's beneficial as well. But overall, uh, I think based on the direction that uh, energy prices will have to go at some point in the future, because demand is not really diminishing, it's going to get progressively more expensive to operate motor vehicles. Uh, whether that's internal combustion, which should go up quite rapidly, uh, in the relatively near future, or electric. Uh, either way, the, the cost of generating the electricity is going to go up over time. So the cost of operating everything is going to get more expensive. So I, I foresee that more people will be switching to um, uh, less costly means of commuting, and that will, uh, that will largely include uh, public transit. Uh, which uh, the city is also doing a pretty decent job of. Uh, but it will also include other personal uh, modes of transport, including bicycles and walking. And as people make that transition because of the cost of operating a motor vehicle, they will, they will really appreciate that things like the cycle tracks are available when the time comes. So not only is this a, a, a potential benefit now, uh, and it will get better as time passes and the network expands, it's, it can be seen as a bit of future proofing so that it's there when the demand suddenly ramps up or ramps up over time at a, uh, a fairly heavy pace when that cost equation starts to break over toward other modes of transport. So when that happens, it'll be really good if this cycle track stuff and other things like it are already in place so that the city doesn't have to scramble to catch up. It's certainly easier to expand an existing network than to build it in the first place. Uh, and that same thing goes with the uh, building the green line, which is the, the new uh, rail line for the LRT. It, uh, you know, all of this stuff is, is future-proofing as well as improving things now. Anyway, uh, I fully expect that uh, in 30 or 40 years, uh, having built the cycle track network now is going to look like a genius move. And uh, that, uh, and that's why I, any opposition I might have had to the cycle tracks, I've pretty much uh, backed away from. 
Uh, although there are some cases where they they have talked about putting a cycle track where it doesn't really make sense. Um, at least it doesn't seem to. The notion of the cycle tracks themselves certainly does. And uh, while I'm not a, a cyclist, um, you know, I, I work from home, so I don't have to uh, uh, commute every day. Uh, but even if I did, I would probably take the transit instead of uh, a, a bicycle because I'd probably be commuting downtown or something like that. Um, and that's a long way on a bicycle. So uh, we'll see uh, what, what happens. Um, uh, how much of the traffic ends up shifting towards cycling and similar modes and how much of it moves to uh, public transit, which is always going to be a net win overall for um, uh, energy usage and emissions simply because you're moving more people with the same, uh, the same kind of efficiency equation. Anyway, um, what it comes down to, I guess, is uh, we did our experiment with the cycle tracks and they seem to be working out and uh, uh, I see that in uh, a couple of current projects, they're actually adding cycle tracks in in areas. Um, so the expansion of the network is already ongoing. So uh, it's clearly showing some level of benefit, and it's certainly going to improve safety for cyclists in those particular areas. I'm all for improving safety. Um, not ridiculously so, but improving safety is good. Um, some of the measures they use, I'm not so sold on, but the cycle track, I can see when I look at it physically how it improves safety. So I'm all for that. Uh, fewer collisions, bicycles versus motor vehicles, that can't be a bad thing. Uh, overall, um, the downsides don't seem to be all that significant. There's a cost to installing them, obviously. There is a cost in road surface or road allowance space. So the uh, motor vehicle capacity of the roads potentially goes down, depending on the exact dynamics of the specific locations. But I'm not seeing any hugely massive downsides and the upsides are good enough that they balance out the uh, relatively minor downsides I see. So going forward, I'm happy to see an expansion of the cycle track network uh, as long as it's done carefully and with proper study and, and consideration for where they want to put them. And as that progresses, uh, we'll get more and more uh, experience with it and uh, hopefully there will be relatively few instances where we discover that we have to take out a cycle track we put in and do something else. Anyway, uh, that's kind of my ramble on cycle tracks. I'm basically in favor of them and I think City Council has done something fairly smart on, with the direction they've gone with them. Uh, Time will tell, of course, and uh, we'll see how it goes, but I don't expect any particular problems with them, it, even in the near to medium future. Anyway, uh, that's all I'm going to say on, on that uh, subject for now. I may come back to it later, but that's all for now. Uh, so if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and uh, make sure to turn on the notifications with that bell icon. Um, just subscribing will cause it to show up in your subscription feed, but if you have notifications turned off, you won't get a, a push notification of every new uh, video. So if you want to be notified, make sure to uh, enable notifications, that bell icon, uh, beside the subscription status uh, bit. Uh, if you like the video, uh, go ahead and give it a, a, a like. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give it a dislike, you know, whatever. Uh, as I understand it, actually uh, liking or disliking the video uh, improves its exposure. Now, of course, all three of you watching this, it's not going to make all that much of a difference. But, you know what? Those buttons are there. You can like things, you can dislike them. Why not do it? And, as always, if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.